know, I've heard that intro so many times. Mm. I wonder if I know. I wonder if I know it by heart. I guarantee you, I don't. I've heard songs a thousand times, and I still don't know the words. <laughs> it's horrific. <laughs> Some people just have a memory that you would know it. You could probably hear it three times and know it. Yeah, I, I, it's because I'm just focusing on it. I never take that that idea that ah, oh, you know, I could never remember something like that. To me, I think that's ridiculous. Or like, oh, I can't learn math. Oh, I can't learn a new language. I I get this. Hearing things like that are just like. I can't. um, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't focus. I can't work. I can't. uh, I guess you can't then. (laughs) That's too bad. I can't. um, I can't uh, understand big icebergs falling into the ocean. I can't understand why people say they have to believe in climate change when they see that 252 gigatons of ice are falling into the ocean every single year. Yeah, the Brunt Ice Shelf last month. Brunt. Um, it was an iceberg bigger than New York City. Gone. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. I'm laughing at how absurd <laughs> it is. It's bigger than New York City. Dude. That is so effing big. Yeah, and Antarctica is uh, recording its hottest days on record. Which uh, it, which are? Uh, it doesn't give the, it's just saying that they are. But this is an example. The polar vortex over Antarctica, a wind pattern driven by the contrast between the frigid pole and the warmth at lower latitudes. That can impact temperature and rainfall patterns in Australia dramatically. Mm-hmm. So when you have a weakened polar vortex, it makes it super hot and dry and gives huge extremes to Australia. So you're, you're telling me Australia... Thousands and thousands of miles away, miles away, should be worried about ice breaking off. You're telling me that should be a worry for them. Think about that. Yeah, I mean, well, in 19- let it sink in like an iceberg. Gigatons of ice lost annually. Giga. Uh, 1979 to 1990, 40 gigatons were lost. Thousand tons. 1989 to 2000, 50 gigatons. Oh, we're doing good. A ton is 2,000 pounds. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. 1999 to 2009, we went from 50 to 166. 166 million. Dude, that's not. So we, it's well, a well, gigaton. We, we, we tripled. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I don't know. And then 2009 to now, we're at 252. Um, gigatons. Dude, the data is right there. And if you're like, oh, it's a chart, maybe someone, you know, is manipulating it. Look at the satellite imagery of the damn shelf of ice. Mm-hmm. It's disappearing. It's drift. They have these things geotagged. Could you imagine geotagging Manhattan because it's about to float away into the ocean? <laughs> oh, how many nautical miles has Manhattan drifted off today? People would be in a freaking panic. <laughs> Yeah, and then how, how many, if if the ice melts in Antarctica, uh, what was it for it, raising? 180 sea? feet. It would raise sea level. Um, by Florida, by everybody else, by every spice island, New Zealand, see you later. <laughs> Anything that's uh, below 180 feet sea level. You're screwed. Gone. Yeah, you're screwed. So most of the world would just be a big warm ocean. Uh, isn't that great? Just a giant warm ocean. And last I checked, people are pretty fearful of swimming in the ocean. They don't like touching seaweed on their feet. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go hang out with some sharks and whales, some yeah, moon jellies. I mean, yeah, because I wonder how much of the population is under 180 feet. How many people can actually swim? Uh, yeah, exactly. Think I know, about it. I know California, Florida, the East Coast, the West Coast. Any coasts are going to be gone. Gone. Oh, wow. Because I know like... Uh, and then imagine, you you know how much like a tide rises by like 25 feet when there's a storm? Mm. So this thing's up 180 feet and then I got a storm coming in. Imagine a typhoon with a 180 foot increase in sea level rise. Dude, there's nothing left. That thing would be so far inland. It would be the United Ocean. And it's crazy because we're, 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 they're, they said this, the detection of sponges and other unidentifiable animals you have animals that defy established science is just one in a steady stream of revelations about a forbidding region so now they're you know as we begin to study it more we're finding um this these sponges and these other identifiable animals that we didn't even know existed yeah uh, and we're beginning to so this shows the importance of the antarctic i know it's remote and desolate um but it affects it affects us all and if we get 150 billion metric tons of ice Every year melting, we, we've got an issue. I mean, just the first year, it's an issue. But, you know, it's not the issue that it's melting. It's the fact that it's increasing in its melt. Mm-hmm. Problem. That's a huge problem. 
Yeah, and, and it's pretty cool. They strap sensors onto seals um, to check the melting area. You know, so it's kind of cool. So you have all these seals and they have or, sensors or, on or, or. and they're just floating around, but they're like little IOT devices. Yeah. <laughs> Nature's IOT. Yeah. Collecting a mass amounts of data. And then in real time, they're able to see the melting side of things, you know, because as the, they're, as we're, how they're swimming, you know, that that's going to be relative to the amount of depth. That's correct. That's there. So it's just really cool to what the scientists are doing up there, but it's not cool. So this is from the world economic forum. I want to tell you what they said, how we should combat this. This is, this is really interesting. There are a number of things just about anyone can do to help blunt the effects of climate change on Antarctica and the rest of the world, ranging from flying less to eating less meat. If we manage to cut emissions... And he hold said warming, eating less meat? Yeah. Wow. If we manage to cut emissions <laughs> wow. and hold warming to two, two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, sea level rise by the end of this century could be just half of what it could be otherwise. So just small... If, if all of us... It's like these fintech companies and stuff like that that charge a penny, but then they charge a penny to a billion people. Well, how much money did you just make? No one noticed that the penny charge was more. Yeah, so it's about you know, it's like taxes, a billion taxes by a hundred that way. You know, if I if I if I come to you and I say, oh, you represent um, this district yeah. in New York City, well, perfect. Well, it, I can help you out. I'm a lobbyist. I can help you out, and we can make sure you get a reelected. All we need is a three cent tax. You know, but on millions of people, how much does that come up to? It's massive. So if everybody would say, hey, um, let's just fly a little bit less. Let's eat a little less meat. Let's and consume by the way, things that are properly. Meat is not only cows, chicken, beef, pork, you know, all that stuff on land. Meat is also in oh. the water. Oh, yeah. We, we, talk, we had People an episode think, on that. When they think meat, what's the first thing you go to in your mind? A cow. Cow. Wrong. Eh. No, it's yeah. all the stuff in the ocean, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, Birds. yeah. Yeah, every, everything. Tunas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we did a whole episode on tuna and stuff like that, but... Um, I think I, I got really it's it's little that, if so. you make you, you don't have to make drastic changes little tiny changes what happens to 7 billion people make a small change a very small change a micro change micro yeah whoa if, that's a shift if you ate if you ate meat once a week instead of eating meat three times a week and 7 billion people did that huge dramatic increase imagine if we all stopped killing each other oh, oh yeah crap well we did that um it just got released but you remember the episode that we did and it was yesterday and I listened to it and it was great um, the episode that we did on how much violence is costing countries. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that amazing report that we did that on. Yeah, it, 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 it's just, a piece. Yeah. yeah, it's just the billions of dollars that are wasted on violence. And, and we talked about that. I encourage everybody to listen to that episode. It was really good. But these are just a few things that we can do that's not a big deal. We're not asking. It just changed with a little bit of the behavior. Yeah, certain oils don't buy. Sorry about that. Stop cooking with certain oils. Stop buying stuff with palm oil in it. Yeah. Do you like rainforests? Do you like tigers? You know, orangutans, stuff like that. If you like the color green, stop buying. I was shocked oil. at how many tigers there are in the world. That's how many that's wild. Uh, let me put that. Dude, I think it's shocking. Aren't there more in cages than there are? There are wild? more. There's more in cages. Uh, watch this population of wild tigers. And we're coming in there and lopping their land. There's 3,900 tigers total. How, how big of a city is 3,900 people? I think there's more in the local apartment complex. Yeah. Think about that. Th that would be like a micro city. Like it would probably have maybe maybe a post it's office. A village, dude. Yeah, it probably wouldn't even have a post office. No. Like in New Mexico, you go by yeah. some places like, what is this? <laughs> Does, should this exist? 3,900 tigers are in the world and that's it. That's a shame. After that, it's gone. Yeah, there's more captivity than there is in the wild. Yeah. But, you know, but over and over again, we see this. You mentioned orangutans. There's there's species of orangutans that are almost gone. Yeah, like will be gone forever. Like the 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 orange the the uh, I forgot the yeah, name. Yeah, of yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You, yeah, but it doesn't matter what the name is, dude. The species disappearing. If just correlate it to this, everybody. If the ice disappears, you disappear. If you're worried about orangutans, you should also worry about you. You're the next thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. First, it's the plants and the animals. Then it's the ice. Then it's the land you step on. Then it's you. Well, there was a whole population of penguins that had to leave because of, um, you know, because of this. So, yeah, it starts with the population of penguins, and then it turns to Australia. Penguins can barely walk. Yeah. Could you imagine displacing that many penguins? And they wear tuxedos. They're so classy. All the time. They're classy. <laughs> they can barely walk, and we're displacing them from They the walk home. like me after leg day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, oh. All that delayed onset muscle soreness, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, uh, 
we got to pay attention to the data. And, you know, if this is what this, I'm going to make a little bridge to turtle. It's one thing for someone to self-identify and say a specific thing about their data. It's another one for them to back it up with photographic proof. On Tartle, someone could tell you something about the meds they're taking and also take a picture of the bottle in their hand and sell that to you. Like, oh, that's, that is in fact happening, right? So it's like when I look at this, this ice shelf data, I can give you the charts, but I can also show you a picture to back it up. That's what data in this world has come to. It's no longer a thing where it's like, oh, someone's probably manipulating. It's just a graph. It doesn't mean much. The impact changes when I can show you the whole story, right? This isn't 50% of the picture anymore. They're giving you all the data. This isn't something you have to believe in. It's the truth that's staring you in the face. Well, you know, like, let's just take Australia. This is being said, Tartar could help with this. Um, If the governments of Australia would get together and say, yeah, we do have a concern about Antarctica, but we know the population doesn't understand that these extreme temperatures in the summer, that's crazy because Australia can get crazy. That's through the Antarctica. Did you know that? And and most people in the population would say, I had no idea that it affects us that much with this vortex. So now now Tartle can become an educational process where people are able to learn and get paid for learning. Wow, learn, teach, teach, learn with an economic empowerment? When's the last time, <laughs> honestly, if you think about the amount of population that's gone to higher education that got paid to go there, slim. Everybody else was paying, right? Paid to learn? Cool. Thank you. And why is, um, for the Big Seven that we have, and people can donate the, their earnings of data to these Big Seven causes, why is climate stability number one? Why is it number one? If you don't have a planet, you don't have a business. If you don't have a planet, you don't have people. You don't have food. You don't have to worry about global peace. You don't have to worry about public health. You're all dead. You're gone. Shareholder gone. value is gone. <laughs> when, I, when I see things like ESG and shareholder value and people still talking about financial gain in a time of crisis, get out of here. Get out of my face. Get your perverted ideas of reality millions and millions of miles way out into space where there's no oxygen and no one can hear you scream in your nonsense. We here are trying to focus on the thing that's actually going to affect our future. That's affecting our longevity as a species. You are no different from that tiger walking around other than the fact that you have the ability for creative thought. And the thing is, you're killing that. Can we, you know, because Tesla has that, a vehicle that's launched into space and has a camera hooked to it. We'll launch those people in space. (laughs) Shareholder value. Bye, (laughs) bye, bye. Launch you up there. It's really cool. People have to look at it because the camera is like giving photos and it's like hooked. (laughs) And Elon Musk said he didn't expect for the camera to last this long or or be hooked on the arm. He thought something would happen, but it's still floating around and and taking pictures of itself. But uh, I mean, like uh, if your head's in the sand, well, then I'm going to. I'm going to put the rest of you in the desert over there. You can all put your heads in the sand. Well, we focus on there's other important things that are currently affecting us. So when you ask about the big seven, why is climate stability first? Because if you can't stabilize the problem, it will continue to spiral out of control beyond a point when you can't do anything and there's no hope left. Yeah, so we have users in Australia, and we have people that listen to the podcast that are in Australia too. Um, so Thanks, those Austra- Aust- shout yeah. out to Australia. Yeah, Thank those you. Australians that you know, are seeing their climate change dramatically, especially in the summers there, um, how can they, instead of relying on their government, instead of relying on policies, you know, instead of reading these articles like this and feeling depressed, um, how can they make a change right now, like right this instant, get off, get off from listening to us? What can they do right now to make a change for climate stability? Oh gosh, don't ask me these questions. Well, because all right, first thing you can well, do. Well, I know. I mean, I know. Well, I know. I know. Co. Yeah. Well, first of all, you can go to Turtle.co, right? That's where I was teeing you. Up. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna be like, what? Don't stop eating meat. <laughs> don't drive your car. No, you no, know, no, no, like, no, 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 no. I want something they can do right now. An easy yeah. win. Easy win you can do. You can sign up on Turtle for free right this second. You can start sharing your data about your thoughts and behaviors, things you are currently purchasing, what you intend to do in the future, so people can analyze that for you and deliver you information back that helps educate you on your own processes. That could be beneficial to this planet. And then after they bought it from you, they're going to give you some money. Why don't you put some money towards those charitable organizations that are strapping IoT devices to seals or putting geotag markers on, you know, you know Antarctic pieces of ice. Or, uh, I mean, if you want to eliminate the supply chain, raise chickens in your backyard. Uh, well, I see, mean, you, wait, you're Now vegan, you're so asking you... me this, but no, I don't mind having chickens. Listen, I like regenerative farming. 
But you're asking me a question like, what can people do? Well, I, I'm trying to focus on turtle. I'm not trying to talk about like, don't eat, <laughs> don't eat, yeah, dolphins. Don't, yeah, yeah. Okay, because you don't know what's you don't know what's in that tuna can. Yeah, I wonder how much is actually tuna. Yeah, lay off the methyl mercury. <laughs> okay, all those things. Um, purchasing power. That's yeah. another way. All that. Yeah. It just just l- learn to understand that the planet is in here our, for you to steward. Yeah. It's you we need to be better stewards of our data and our planet. Yes, and of ourselves as individuals. Cuz we're a little reckless. <laughs>